Greetings, I am Minister Christopher A. Darby, and I'm honored to facilitate this week's Bible lesson. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24 I want to thank God and the Holy Spirit for their presence today. Also give thanks and honor to our pastor, Moderator Emeritus J.A. Milan, for giving me this opportunity to teach. And thanks to the other ministers, officers, and the members for your prayers and support during these studies. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for giving me my health and strength, wisdom and understanding of your word. I pray now that you will use me as your instrument today to teach your people. I give you praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The topic of today's lesson is sharing the gospel of Christ. Sharing the gospel of Christ. This lesson is based on the gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. The word of God says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Many Christians believe that the sharing of the gospel is the primary responsibility of pastors and preachers only. In this lesson, we will emphasize the importance of every born-again person's responsibility in sharing the gospel. A Christian does not need to be individually called or specially gifted to be a herald of the good news. We are commanded to be witnesses of Christ, commissioned to train others to be disciples. This is an individual obligation, not merely the collective responsibility of the church. No duty is more significant and none bears more eternally rewarding fruit. John MacArthur In our scripture text, Mark chapter 16 verse 15, Jesus makes reference to the gospel, commanding his disciples to preach it to every creature, offering salvation to all who believe and are baptized. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16 through 17, Paul makes reference to the gospel. For it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He was not ashamed of the gospel, how it is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. What is this gospel that Jesus wanted everyone to hear? What is this gospel that is God's power to save mankind? Let us define the word gospel. It simply means the good news. It pertains to the good news of salvation through Christ, and it involves the proclamation of God's grace offered through Jesus. It requires a response involving obedience. A simple way to summarize the content of the gospel is that it contains facts to believe, commands to obey, and promises to receive. Let's take a closer look at sharing the gospel of Christ, starting with some facts to believe. We need to believe that Christ was crucified for our sins. Fundamental to the gospel Paul preached, and as foretold by the Old Testament scriptures. Why did Jesus die for our sins? Well, because we are all sinners, and because the wages of sin is death. In love, God offers his son as a propitiation, and that word simply means as a sacrifice for our sins. Christ was raised from the dead, which is also fundamental to the gospel that Paul preached, and as proclaimed by Peter in the first gospel sermon, Acts chapter 2, 22 through 32 and as seen by many eyewitnesses, 
Raising Jesus verifies the justification offered on the cross. Christ is exalted as King and Savior. He is now both Lord and Christ. He is head over all things. All authorities and powers are now subject to him. God has made Jesus ruler over the kings of the earth. And you need to know that Christ is coming again as promised when he ascended to heaven. Coming to offer both rest and tribulation, rest to those who responded to the call of the gospel, tribulation to those who obeyed not the gospel, his coming will cause many to mourn while others will rejoice. Whether we are prepared for his coming depends upon our obedience to the gospel. This implies that the gospel of Christ also contains commands to obey, believe the gospel concerning Jesus Christ. We must believe the gospel or we are lost. The gospel is God's power for salvation to those who believe. We must believe that God raised him from the dead. For those willing to believe, eternal life can be theirs. Confess your faith in Jesus. Confessing with our mouth the Lord Jesus leads to salvation. The Ethiopian eunuch provides an example of such a confession. Jesus will confess us before God if we confess him before others. Repent of your sins. Jesus wanted repentance preached in his name to all nations. Peter therefore preached the need to repent to the Jews. And Paul likewise preached the need to repent to the Gentiles. Unless we repent, we will perish in our sins. Be baptized for the remission of sins. Jesus expected people to be baptized in response to his gospel. Peter proclaimed baptism for the remission of sins to those who believe. Paul related the place baptism had in his salvation from sin. When we submit to baptism, God does his work in saving us. Be faithful unto death. Faithfulness is necessary if we desire to receive the crown of life. There's a real danger in losing our faith. Rest assured, our faithful labors would not be in vain. When one obeys the commands of the gospel, they receive wonderful blessings. These blessings are offered in the gospel as promises to receive the remission of sins. We are promised the remission of sins in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Our sins are blotted out or washed away in Acts 3:19, 22 and 16. They are made possible by the precious blood of Christ. An ongoing blessing whenever we confess our sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit, spoken of by Christ during his ministry, promised to those who repent and are baptized. One aspect of this gift relates to his indwelling, the Spirit indwells the Christ. The Spirit enables us to modify the flesh. The Spirit is God's instrumental agent to strengthen the Christ. The Spirit can produce wonderful fruit in our life. Because we are His children, God has given us this wonderful gift. The gift of eternal life in the sense of our eternal reward received at the end of a life bearing the fruit of holiness received in the age to come, received at the time of judgment, in a sense of our abundant life now offered by Jesus. A quality of life made possible by our relationship with God. A life in Christ enjoyed even now. Thus godly living has promised both in this life and that which is to come. In conclusion of this lesson, can we understand why the gospel of Christ is good news? The facts to believe contains the message of God's love and grace. 
The commands to obey are not difficult works done to earn salvation, but simple acts of faith whereby we receive God's grace. The promises to receive help us deal with the real problems of our sin in our lives. What have you done with the gospel of Christ? You have not heard it, if not before, you know as much as those who heard it on the day of Pentecost, if not even more. Together with the Apostle Peter, we implore you, be saved from this perverse generation. Respond as they did in faith and baptism, and rest assured that Jesus will save you and add you to his church. The topic of today's lesson has been sharing the gospel of Christ. Our scripture text has been Mark chapter 16, verse 15. This has been... Let us pray. God, we thank you for reminding us through your word that the sharing of the gospel of Christ is every born-again believer's responsibility. We now know, if not before, that no duty is more significant and none bears more eternal reward and fruit than that of leading a lost soul to Jesus Christ. We pray now for the ones who have received this message today that we will make the necessary adjustments in our individual lives to make sharing the gospel of Christ our primary duty. We lift up in prayer our pastor, Pastor J.A. Molan, and his wife, Lady Felicia Molan, along with their family. Lead them, guide them, and protect them is our prayer for our leaders. Give wisdom and understanding to the officers, leaders, and members of the Greater Peace Baptist Church and we ask blessings upon those who are visitors to our weekly Bible study and worship experience. We offer salvation today to anyone who may be listening to receive you today as their personal Savior. If you're listening right now, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless and keep you until our next Bible study is our prayer.